Okay, I wanted to give you guys another example of a differential equation with an initial condition uh, where the solution involves an integral function. So I think uh, it'd be helpful for you to see a, an additional example of this. So here we go. Uh, first off, we've got the differential equation dy dx equals y squared cosine x cubed. Our initial condition is here. Uh, y at 3 is equal to 2. Okay, our first step is going to be to separate the variables um, because in this case we have both variables on the right side and that's necessary. So bring the y squared over to the left side, we get 1 over y squared dy equals uh, cosine x cubed dx, left on the right side. So we've got the variables separated. Now we're ready to integrate uh, both sides with respect to the dx really, but with respect to each variable. And on the left side we can integrate. We get, um, well we can rewrite it I suppose to make it easier. y to the negative 2 dy. Make it clear that we're not going to use a natural log here since uh, the derivative of the y squared is not on top. Uh, all right, let's see on the right side um, we're not going to be able to integrate that. This is part of the issue because we don't have a factor of x squared on the right side to allow us to do a substitution. And that uh, formula at cosine of x cubed is not something we know how to integrate directly. It's going to be integrated from our initial x coordinate of 3 to x and now we'll change our function to be a different variable using what's sometimes called a dummy variable and I like to use t if I'm already using x for the main variable. Uh, so cosine of t cubed dt in the next step, we're going to integrate the left side. We end up with y to the negative 1 over negative 1 or a negative 1 over y. On the right side, we've got our constant of integration, c, plus the integral from 3 to x cosine of t cubed dt. All right, now we're ready to solve for y. If I multiply the y up to the right and divide the whole expression on the right side down, I end up with y equals a negative 1 over c plus the integral from 3 to x of cosine of t cubed dt. So what we need to do, though, is, is actually figure out what that c is based on our initial condition. We know that y of 3 is equal to 2, so we can plug the 2 in for y. And we know that's equal to negative 1 over c plus the integral from 3 to 3, cosine of t cubed dt. The integral from 3 to 3, though, is 0, so it ends up being simplifying to 2 equals negative 1 over c. Multiplying the c up and dividing by the 2, we see this gives us that c is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, we can plug this in to get our solution. Over here, I'll put it in a different color, so our particular solution that we're looking for here that satisfies the differential equation and the initial condition is that y is equal to negative 1 over a negative 1 half plus the integral from 3, 3 to x of cosine of t cubed dt. This could be simplified a little bit. We want to make it look a little nicer. We can multiply through by negative 2 over negative 2. So multiplying through by negative 2 over negative 2 to make this look a little nicer, we get uh, positive 2 on top. On the bottom, we get negative 2 times a negative 1 half, which is positive 1, minus 2 times the integral from 3 to x cosine of t cubed dt. Okay, that will be our simplified solution to this differential equation with initial condition or sometimes called an initial value problem. Uh, to check it we want to see that when you put the x value of 3 in that we get uh, 2 out and we can see if we put 3 in we do have the integral from 3 to 3 uh, which is going to zero out that integral term and you get 2 as your output. That's quick to check even just mentally here. So our next question is whether dy dx is equal to what it should be. If we look at the top of the problem here we see that that should be equal to y squared times cosine of x cubed, okay, right here. Let's bring that down below. y squared times
times cosine of x cubed. We're going to check to see if that's indeed what happens here. In order to take the derivative of this more easily, we might want to rewrite this function as, uh, let's see, bringing that bottom to the top. So 2 times 1 minus 2 times the integral from 3 to x cosine of t cubed dt to the negative 1 power. Okay, this allows us to write dy dx equal to, bringing the negative 1 down, we've got negative 2 times the base, 1 minus 2 times the integral from 3 to x of cosine of t cubed dt, all raised to the negative 1 minus 1, or negative 2 power. We're going to multiply that by the derivative of the base. Uh, let's see, that's going to have a negative 2 in it. And then using the second fundamental theorem of calculus, we know the derivative of 3 the integral from 3 to x of cosine of t cubed dt is just going to be cosine of x cubed. Okay, so you put that on there. Cosine of x cubed looks promising if you look at our uh, derivative formula up here. Uh, so what we want to do now is to simplify what we have there and then see if we can't make a check to see if it's actually right. So let's see, we've got negative 2 times negative 2 gives us the 4 times cosine of x cubed on top. On the bottom we've got, uh, let's see, the integral expression there. So 1 minus 2 times the integral from 3 to x cosine of t cubed dt quantity squared. Now what we want to do is check and see if it's equal to this formula here. To do that, in this case, I think it's probably easiest to start with the left, well, with what we want it to be, this form, and see if it indeed simplifies to this form. So let's go ahead and plug in y, our y formula that's here, into our original formula there. So dy dx we know is equal to y squared. So that's going to be 2 over 1 minus 2 times the integral from 3 to x cosine of t cubed dt squared times cosine of x cubed. Well, let's see what that ends up being here. So when you square the top, we get 4 times the cosine of x cubed, which is up there on top already. When you square the bottom, we just sort of leave it squared, and this is looking good. We've got 1 minus 2 times the integral from 3 to x cosine of t cubed dt. That expression down there is going to be squared as well in the denominator. And that ends up matching exactly with the derivative we just calculated directly from our final solution curve. So hopefully you can see that this makes some sense and hopefully it sort of reinforces what we did before and gives you a better sense of how we might end up with an integral in a definite integral and an answer curve or a solution to a differential equation. Let me know if you have any questions on this.